Now let us see how we can texturize this mug. Actually we are already there. We only need to replace the test grid with an appropriate image. But there are still a few small caveats which I want to point out and fix before we go on. First take a close look at the UV map. The unwrap looks a bit weird and for some reason the area is shifted to the right. Hence parts of the map are positioned outside of the UV canvas. But on the other hand everything seems okay on the object itself. So what is going on here? Well, actually the UV canvas is infinite, and the texture is repeated along X and Y. But we cannot see these repetitions at the moment. Go to the UV properties sidebar. Locate the display section and enable, repeat. Now you see the texture repetitions, and now we can understand why the texture is not broken on the object. But there is another issue with the texture. Look at the lower corners. Here you see a step. Actually I do not know why this step appears at all. And I preferred to see a perfect rectangular shape here. That would make it really easy for texturing. And here is the trick how you can force Blender to do that. Select all except the center vertices. And go to front view as before. Now rotate the entire selection a tiny little bit anti-clockwise. Then unwrap a cylinder projection. And scale the UV map along Y, as we did before. And now the unwrap is perfect. You only need to move the area down to the bottom border and you are done. Here is another tip. Enable UV Constrain to Image Bounds. Now you can no longer move the area outside of the image. But we still have another issue. Let me enable Paint Mode on the texture. Now you can paint immediately on the image. Let me add a simple marker on the texture. This marker also shows up on the object. But unfortunately not only on the outer side but also on the inner side of the mug. This is because the cylinder unwrap has placed the inner side of the cup on the same location as the outer side. While this is not an error, I still preferred to separate the texture spaces. In our case this is very simple to achieve. Disable paint mode. Then synchronize the UV selection with the object selection. That means any vertex you select on the UV map will also be selected on the object, and vice versa. Select the center vertices and hide them by pressing H. I do this because I will otherwise get troubles on the UV map in the next step. Locate the edge loops of the inner wall of the cup and select them. Now turn back to the UV map, you see one row of UV faces is selected. Move these faces upwards and out of the face area until it scales correctly. You can interactively check the changes on the object while you move the faces. Finally unhide all hidden vertices by pressing Alt-H. You see that now the cup bottom intersects with the cup wall in the UV map. We can fix that by scaling down the circles a bit. Disable the editing synchronization first. Now you can select the loose parts of a UV map by hovering over it, then press L. And if you want to add another part to the selection then press Shift L. And scale the selected part by pressing S and drag the mouse. And finally we have defined a UV map for easy texturing. You now can go to Photoshop or take any flat image to make your cup texture. I have actually prepared a demo image and I will open it now, just to see the next caveat.
you see that this image has a ratio different from 1. Thus the UV canvas gets auto-adjusted to the new ratio, and we have to adjust the map to the image. Apparently the image is made only for the cup walls. So let's adjust the wall's UV faces first. Let's simply scale the map to bounds. But first move the circles fully into the wall area. Now select UV. Transform. Image to bounds. Now the cup walls look correct. For the bottom circles we can get a bit adventurous. Let's select the outer part first and move it to the center of one of the sunflowers. And let's scale down the sharp bottom at a bit. And now finally the mug starts looking like a real mug. Now let's move the inner bottom part to the white area of the texture. There is one last issue that I would like to point out. Remember why we added the extra edge loops on the model? We made that to make sharp edges. But actually we do no longer need most of the extra edges because due to the texture we get enough visual information so that the edges are no longer looking washed out. So, let us remove the edge loops from the inner part of the cup. Select one loop at a time. Then press the delete key, and from the upcoming selection choose edge loop. Now Blender deletes the edge but reconnects the surface appropriately. So here is our cup. All what remains to be done is importing it to Second Life and see how it looks there.